next we have someone who has been part of this um, fight. And yes, before I forget, I must tell you that Jyotirmoy Barua has actually shared the National Committee's um, uh, you know, web page where you can see um, everything that Maha and uh, Tony have spoken about and that wonderful energy plan, which is of course much better than the governmental plan of coal, LNG and nuclear. Uh, and much cheaper too. So a more sustainable plan uh, you can find there. Meanwhile, let's go on to um, somebody who will respond and really he's the best person to respond to a presentation um, from, from a Bangladeshi on Rampal. Uh, Soumya Datta um, stays on this side in India, is an Ashoka Fellow and renowned environmentalist. He's also co-convener of SEPAC, one of our um, you know, co-hosts today, uh, the South Asian People's Action on Climate Crisis. An environmentalist uh, as part of the movement for advancing understanding on sustainability and mutuality, mutuality which they call MOSAM. Uh, he's also part of the Bharat Jan Vigyan Jata and the India Climate Justice um, Network. Somia is uh, an advisory board member of the UN Climate Technology Center and Network. Shomo Datto, who is really, I think his heart is in the Sundarbans and in um, all these movements in Bangladesh that hope to conserve it. Shomo, the mic is yours. Thank you, Vidya. Thank you, everyone uh, who presented before me. Uh, my uh, involvement with Rampal struggle started in late 2014, early 2015, when uh, there were some big conferences in Dhaka on Sundarbans. Uh, different uh, groups organized uh, conferences, discussions, and I was invited to speak on uh, basically energy and the relationship between energy and uh, development. Uh, then I participated in the 2016 Long March and even beyond. We went to the Rampal site, talked to lots of people maybe 200, 250 people, local people all the way. So uh, I'll be presenting very quickly because Tani's presentation brought in a lot of this uh, Rampal issues and Maha also presented on the energy issue, but I'll add some points which have been missed out. Uh, one of the major ob objections by both the Bangladesh and Indian groups, activist groups, environmental institutions is to Rampal is, it's not only a question of carbon emission. Uh, Bangladesh carbon emission is not a very major factor compared to the global. In fact, uh, globally, we burn around 7.56 uh, billion tons of coal. This will be adding uh, another 5 million tons of coal. But the major impact will be on the Sundarbans. And the, apart from the factors that Penny said, there are very critical factors. Like she mentioned about Amphan. When Amphan hit West Bengal, uh, they, Amphan destroyed 10.5 lakh houses. That is one, over 1 million houses in West Bengal Park, only in three districts. But since it had to, of course, the speed went down because also of landfall, cyclone speeds reduce on landfall. But another big factor was the friction, the friction coefficient of the Sundarbans, the forest, which was uh, not, which was totally denuded in the area that it hit in the West Bengal. So Bangladesh really didn't get huge impact from one of the largest cyclones, cyclonic storm in the last century, 100 years. Amphan reached category five stage at one point. So this also gives us the importance of Sundarban. But how does Rampal connect into it? See, if you are building a big coal power plant, which will be emitting anything between 8 million tons of carbon dioxide, some sulfur dioxide, there'll be a huge amount of acid, which is called acid rain, which will be coming down with the rains. And the mangrove forests are very sensitive to the pH value, to the dissolved oxygen, to the water temperature. So if you disturb this balance, mango forests die out. This year in January, I was in Indian Sundarbans in eight islands in a big uh, science outreach program. And in February, I was in the Bangladesh Sundarban with Mehdi and all. And we are finding this uh, crisis one after the other everywhere. And then at, at that point also, I mentioned this. And then in May 20th, Amphan hit. So if you are bringing in one big coal power plant, one big coal power plant will not destroy Sundarban. But we have already seen by holding the hand of Rampal, there are a large number of industries called forging units, cement plants, everything is going ahead because the land is available, power is available, connectivity is available, and water is available. The second thing is 
the coal power plant don't only uh, emit a little particulate and uh, uh, carbon dioxide there will be mercury all coal contains mercury mercury is a neurotoxin and that uh, danger of mercury as a neurotoxin is increased if that area is a wetland which the sundarbans area there is and all of us probably heard about the minamata disaster in japan this will be a much larger scale because the mercury when it goes into uh, water bodies then it, there is a chance of turning into methyl mercury and it goes into the water body means fish accumulate fish is bioaccumulator so all the pollution the rampal coal uh, uh, the be a basin coal ash pond is situated right on the pashur river the barges that come in with coal and now the bar barges that come in also with fly ash from india there are regular barge sinking incidents happening in bola pashur sela all these rivers in the sundarbans so the acidity the emission uh, pollution level in the rivers are going up and fish being a very large resource for livelihood and protein source for bangladesh millions of people in that area probably 3 to 4 million people depend on this kind of livelihood forest resources access and fish fish access catching fish so if you are actually allowing the entire fish resources to be poisoned because as i said fish is a bioaccumulator so anything that is available in the water at a low dilution will be concentrated in the fish and when the people eat those fish it will be even more concentrated in our bodies so we are in fact allowing the poisoning of all the human bodies that will be consuming the fish from there plus we are allowing the poisoning of the water resources changing their ph balance their dissolved oxygen because when huge amount of hot water warm water is being dumped dumped will be dumped into poshur river the do the dissolved oxygen will go down apart from many other changes and that also creates huge problem for aquatic animals and aquatic plants the entire aquatic life chain will be collapsing and that we have seen in many other places we have done work in mundra in the extreme western part which is close to pakistan on the other side so no, tata mundra and adari mundra what devastation they have caused so there will be a massive impact on local population and this local is not only rampal but apart from that today when we when i visited along with an india team 2016 the rampal site mongla port and the uh, region around there is a huge number of people whose livelihood still are reasonably well carried out by catching crabs and the crab is a very the large crabs that are available and there is a huge number of wetlands small ponds medium sized ponds all these will be poisoned when you release so much of fly ash so much of uh, bottom ash and fly ash is dumped there and so much of coal dust so that whole area will be completely poisoned sundarban mangrove forest will start to get degraded fast and then over a period of time mangroves there will be dying out that sign this time in february visit mehdi showed me also and he also talked about there are already mangrove die outs happening because of other industry so this will be magnified many 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 times but let me quickly come into because many uh, the question of whether bangladesh do i think this has not been addressed fully whether bangladesh needs rampal or similar power plants uh maha talked about then he talked about a little bit uh, about the availability of electricity but i don't don't think you can compare if the comparison of megawatt hour to megawatt hour is not exact comparison electricity doesn't give you pleasure just by being there electricity is a service electricity is an enabler all kinds of energy is an enabler we have to see what electricity and energy does to human beings how does it uh, how does it complement human development and in that you will see if bangladesh's goal is to improve the living standards the human development index of bangladesh population look at sri lanka with roughly 60% of electricity consumption of india sri lanka's hdi today the human development index today is 0.776 it's in the high development category india is 0.64 it is in the medium development category with almost as a 65 67% extra consumption than this bangladesh with one less than one third the electricity consumption of india today per capita is already at 0.61 so there is a, there are other routes of human development where you don't need to destroy your protective sundarbans where you don't need to spo uh, poison the livelihood of your millions of fish workers fish uh, fish farmers and fish catcher both capture and culture fisheries there are two kinds of fisheries that is practiced in that area capture and culture so both this will be devastated so that's not needed the other point that bangladesh government like the indian government and several others is not looking at 
is that over the last 15 16 years the amount of energy needed for a certain amount of uh, even gdp gdp is not a very good indicator but even this crude indicator of gdp if you want to create extra 1000 dollar gdp how much energy you need to give we are all still using the 1970s model and those 1970s economic calculation if you see in 2003 india used roughly around uh, uh, 190 kg of oil equivalent to create every 1000 dollar of gdp today that is 90 less than half in china 231 was the figure in 2003 today it is 120 half so throughout the countries throughout the world if you see the amount of even gdp creation is today requires half or less than half of the energy total energy because electricity is a part of total energy basket primary energy basket so bangladesh today should not look around the worst look towards the worst example bangladesh should look towards the better example other reasons being bangladesh is one of the most congested most high high population density countries india has around 420 bangladesh around 1200 so if you are destroying your livelihoods your land your forest protective forest the sundarbans protect something like uh, three crore people from uh, cyclones and storms and it's not only the wind because people talk about the wind when a big tropical storm comes there are three components which damage uh, lives which damage property and infrastructure one is the high speed wind second is the storm surge third is the heavy rain so both the first one the high speed wind and the storm surge forest particularly mangrove forests which are very dense are very good at slowing down at uh, reducing their impact so if you are going to have a major amount of power power electricity from coal at a very high cost and also at a very high economic cost forget about the environmental and social cost even the economic cost is uh, i think close to uh, six rupees what rampal has been earlier uh, calculated so this is complete stupidity complete madness there are very good ways not only renewable over a uh, period of time i know all of the all of you talked about bangladesh has indigenous gas domestic gas gas until you move to more renewable and that every kind of power every kind of energy extraction has an impact there is nothing called zero impact even renewable has an impact renewable has a land impact bangladesh being very congested you have to also go for uh, innovative models like agri voltaics you can't give it like uh, companies in india are doing give it a huge amount of land to developers so that the cordon of the land in the name of solar parks that cannot be done in bangladesh as it should not be done in india but there is three times the reason not to be done in bangladesh because the population density is almost three times and intensity of land use in bangladesh is even more than in india because of the uh, dependence on agriculture and land dependent livelihood land means land water forest dependent livelihoods so the intensity of land dependence in bangladesh is far more than even in india and in india it is far more than in many european countries american countries who don't understand these relationships very well so uh, i think there are ways very clear ways but i said in even in the economic term there are very clear pathways for if you want to develop your population develop their standard of living develop their qualities of life if you just want to even de develop your gdp even then this uh, rampal and coal power plants are very bad investments in terms of economic investment these are very bad investments so i think i am out of my time uh, with the so i'll uh, end here and i'll be yes, happy to answer can. any question